absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. Oh gosh, so beautiful. So I always joke beautiful. about it. I say it. It's like you know, in Adam Sandler's Happy Gilmore when he's like, "Just give it a little tappy tap, <laughs> a little tap tap tap." <laughs> when people ask me about what's that style, I say it's guitar tapping. A little guitar tapping. Yeah. Well, we've had uh, exposure to some of that here on the show, but not really that 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 flavor of it. That that kind of Michael Hedges sort of flavor. Oh. Love Michael Hedges. Wow, and he, uh, you guys uh, did a tribute with him and Andy McKee. Did I see something yeah. about that recently? Yeah, it was at um, Wood Songs in mm -hmm. Lexington, Kentucky. Wonderful. They have yep. a, a live radio show, and they get people to come on, and they, they stream it. Mm -hmm. um, it was funny because we did it the first time, and uh, something happened with their filming. And so they had to cancel the streaming because the lighting wasn't working. And so they said, well, the good news is that means that you guys get to come back and do the whole show again. So we actually got to do it twice. Oh, my goodness. Um, but the first time it wasn't streamed. So mm -hmm. I said, oh, I'll hang out with Andy McKee another night. Oh, that yeah. sounds good to me. That's <laughs> right. That's He's right. He's such a sweet guy, too. Um, it's, it's, oh. it's wonderful to meet people. Now that wasn't, like and that, that wasn't all that long ago. And that was, um, yeah, earlier this year sometime. Okay, earlier yeah. this year. And you have been... So busy. I know you were with us with the Fall Fingerstyle Retreat in November, yes. uh, early November, and you have been a thousand places since then <laughs> and are going tomorrow. You're in Knoxville. so Yes, tomorrow morning yeah. on WDVX, which you can stream at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I know you're kind of based out of uh, Nashville. How many yes. dates a year do you think you play? I don't know. I haven't counted in a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, every day if you count playing at home. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, as any of you have questions, please type them in, and our uh, producer will get those to us. I see some of you already have um, typed in a few things. Eraser team is saying. Yes, Wood Songs with Michael Jonathan. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, eraser team is saying a lot of work on the fretting thumb. Uh, how do you keep your fretting thumb from cramping when you're kind of doing all of your oh stuff. Oh my gosh. Have you ever had problems with that? That's a great question. I had had problems with that. Um, three years into playing, I I was working on all these really challenging classical pieces that my teacher told me that I w might mess up my technique, and it did, but I did it anyway. And it helped my guitar playing, except that it made my hands cramp up because I was doing things that I wasn't physically ready for. Yeah. Um, and I remember going to him crying one day and saying, my hand hurts you know yeah. and and I was in a lot of pain and and uh, he told me to take three days off of playing and to um, after the three days do only exercises for a week and uh, it was the, it was the most incredible thing I've ever done for my playing and I retaught myself how to play the guitar in that week by only doing exercises meaning you're not allowed to play any songs because mm -hmm. then you'll go back to all your old bad habits. Um, yeah. But it was great, and I, I would practice it in front of a mirror and um, and just try to get the thumb to just rest on the back of the guitar so that it's, um, it's just sitting there. A lot of people think that you have to do the squeezing action, and, right. and some people do play that way, and there's nothing wrong with it, except mm -hmm. that for me it was painful, and I didn't right. want to do it like that. Yeah. So um, everybody has their own way to do it, but... What I learned at that time is the thumb can actually just rest on the back of the guitar and the fingers can can bend to sit on top of it. If you imagine that gravity pulls down, mm -hmm. technically if you l let your arm hang like this, um, the weight of gravity is pulling down. So when we lift our hand up, the weight of gravity can pull down on the elbow. So if we have our hand in a position that feels very relaxed and the thumb's just resting there, and the, the fingers are bending, so they're sitting on top of the string, mm -hmm. we can actually use the weight of gravity to help us play, and the thumb can really just kind of sit there. Um, so I kind of retrained myself, I'll not hold this microphone now, um, retrained myself how to um, play with the left hand by, by just practicing like little finger exercises, you know, just like one, two, three, four, all different kinds of combinations of that, and and looking at it in the mirror to see if my thumb would do one of two things. It might do the thing where it pushes up underneath the fret um, or the uh, fretboard or 
the neck. There we go. That's the word for it. <laughs> um, or if it would go up above it. Or the wrist would do this thing like this, where yeah. it was trying to like squeeze. So uh, what I learned is that uh, the most important thing for me on playing and for a lot of people is to just try to be as effortless as possible yeah. so that we can get into the music and into the heart. And um, that came from being able to just have that natural curve in the wrist as if so not this right. and not this but more like if you were just hanging the arm that's always a good reference it's like this feels good um, exactly yeah so wow how did you how did you get started doing the tapping thing have you I, you probably haven't always started that you probably started out normal just like the majority of players yeah. um did you have any formal training on guitar Absolutely. Just in normal, I mean, just you had your classical, yes, and that was at the University of Florida or University of South Florida, yeah. South Florida. Um, I spent um, about a year mm -hmm. playing along to records mm -hmm. and um, just ear training, and then um, as I was blasting my electric guitar to Nirvana and Green Day at the age of 13, um, my mom would come in and say she'd pay for lessons and I should study classical guitar. I'm like, no, I hate <laughs> classical music. And it was funny because I got this perspective as a kid studying piano that classical music was this very rigid academic thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, d I didn't want uh, to play classical music because I, I had this perception, even though I, in my heart, used to grew up listening to classical music. Mm -hmm. But I thought that the study of classical music was this very strict thing with a lot of rules yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I, I didn't want to do it but then um, I went to a performing arts high school and um, the I heard that there was a guitar concert and I was studying acting at the time mm -hmm. and I said oh guitar sounds cool I'll go to the concert the professor got up and played a modern classical piece called Sunburst by Andrew York you've probably heard oh, yeah, that yeah, song yeah. and when I heard that song I, I mean it was the most incredible performance I'd ever seen in my life. I mean, his, his expression and the way that his heart was pouring out through the music was something yeah. really profound. It was more than the guitar, it was music. Yeah. And it was more than classical or anything that you would fit into his genre. It was just this pure expression. And, and at that time, as a teenager looking for something to cling, cling on to and a sense of belonging or some kind of thing to do, yeah. um, I uh, I really clung on to to the guitar at that moment, and I and I went over to to him and and said, "You've just changed my life. You're the teacher I've been waiting for." And <laughs> turns out that was actually a modern classical guitar piece, and so then I fell in love with classical guitar and basically dedicated my life to learning yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and then studied jazz at the University of South Florida and composition. So mm -hmm. it's all been the tapping thing has just been an evolution of um, necessity, really, mm -hmm. of trying to um, writing stuff for multiple instruments, and then trying to figure out wait how can I try to play all of these things at the same time. That's right. And so I realized that um, the guitar can be played differently than it's taught. A lot of the times, just two hands doing the same thing, and the entire platform is. Um, one unit in a way mm -hmm. um, and I realized each string can be its own voice yeah. and each fret can be its own voice and you can have multiple voices going on at the same time and, and so that's what kind of freed me up in the world of composition on the guitar to try these open tunings and tapping. Who were some of your tapping influences at that time? Oh, definitely Michael Hedges. Yeah, Michael Hedges. He and was kind of the, the first one that everybody knows. Yeah, in the movie August Rush, yeah. Khaki King. Khaki she was King, yep, yep. When I saw August Rush, and you know, at the end when he performs, or his song is performed with a symphony, mm -hmm. that was like a dream come true. I mean, yeah. because in my heart, I can hear a whole symphony, but yeah. I think it'd probably be expensive to tour with one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So I'm like, well, how many sounds can I make with my hands and feet at once? <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, we have uh, so many questions already um, coming. Plantsman13 is, uh, oh, we already talked about who was an early inspiration. Um, Ted MT is saying, what is your guitar? Yeah, tell us a little oh. bit about the gear that you're playing. This is a Maiton 808 guitar. Um, it's made in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, it has the AP5 pickup system in it, which is just extraordinary compared to anything that I've ever played. Um, there is a condenser microphone on the inside and the uh, Piezo pickup. And so, um, you know, things like this 
what can be picked up or you can hear everything. It's a very alive guitar, um, and it takes takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, you have to be careful to not hit your nail on it. or. And you know, but tell us about your nails. We already had a couple of questions about your <laughs> nails as well. It's a freaky long thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> I can't ever cut it. I, I just, I like having the long nails. I use the, um, the acrylic gel. Mm-hmm. Um, right, right, right. Which is funny if anybody's ever seen the video of Bon Kui Kui on YouTube. Mm-hmm. She's this. Yes. You've seen it? Yeah. <laughs> the nail Unfortunately, salon. Unfortunately, yes, yes, That's yes. pretty much um, the story <laughs> of my life, except she'll say, why only one hand? And I'll, I'll say, oh, I'm a guitar player. And she'll go, guitar. Oh, it's so pretty. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, so that's every two weeks of my life. Um, getting the nails done and um, they always tried to get me to upgrade to gel Mm -hmm. and I thought that they were just trying to you know get me to pay the extra three dollars but then I realized it's actually better so Mm -hmm. I I do get the gel now it's stronger Mm -hmm. Um, and I just I file them like um, classical guitar nails Mm -hmm. Um, I try to keep them just a little past the flesh they can get a little long sometimes but it's a happy medium because um, when you're tapping um, I have to make sure to angle it so that it it doesn't, um, you know, hit the nail. So mm-hmm. if it's too long, it can be problematic. But right, right, right. Well, tell us about your board. What are you What are you playing through on your on your board? Let's see if we can get a shot of that. Well, your board definitely inspires me. This could help me travel <laughs> a little lighter on <laughs> airplanes. Um, but uh, I have a really actually a basic setup that I'm working with right now. Um, I'm just u- going through a tuner. I have two delay pedals. I'm y- only using one of them most of the time. Um, the Giga Delay. This is the DD20 digital delay by, made by Boss. Uh, it's a great pedal. I, yeah. I love it because it's a, it's a very natural sounding delay. There's no loop on here, which a lot of people think there is, but um, it's just a delay. So you're getting a trail off and then I'm playing something on top of it so it can appear to be looping at times. Or you, it can be perceived as looping, but it's actually just the overtones and the delay of something that was just played before. Um, and then um, I have an MXR 10 band EQ. And what are you doing with that? Just kind of uh, goosing, looks like you're goosing a little bit of the low mids there. Yeah, oh, actually something moved. Oh no, I noticed something sounded different. Um, <laughs> usually I boost the 62 hertz because that's about the, the range of um, where the subwoofer can push, uh, especially through a larger sound system if I'm doing stuff like this. If I want, if I want it to really boom in a subwoofer, if mm-hmm. I if I boost around 60 hertz, that's really helpful. I do typically cut a little bit in the low mids um, around. Well, like uh, actually, usually I have 125 down a bit and 250 down more. But 125 is boosted right now, and it sounds pretty good. So <laughs> yeah, it just depends on the room. Um, and um, yeah, right now, uh, mostly the EQ is kind of flat, just a little bit tucked down in the low mids and the boost up around 60 hertz. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an Eventide H9, which I didn't use for that piece. It's a it's a multi-effects pedal. It does reverb, delays, all kinds of really cool things. Um, it is a very digital sounding pedal, mm-hmm. so I don't use it that much unless I want a sp- very specific sound. It's like mm-hmm. modulation. Um, I have the Holy Grail reverb, which I don't even have turned on at the moment. Um, because I'm using the amp, um, the AER acoustic amp, and just the reverb on there. And uh, this harmony singer, which I'm obviously not using because I'm not singing anything at the yeah. moment. Uh, so that song, really, the only thing I was just g- going through was that giga delay pedal. And so tell us about the stomp. This is the Cop Percussion. It's a K-O-P-F. It's, um, that's the company name, Cop, I think. Mm-hmm. Cop Percussion. And this is called the Toe Kicker. They make um, all kinds of really cool um, percussion instruments, cajon drums, mm-hmm. really neat sounding things. But this is the best kick that I tried. I, uh, there were several others. I just couldn't get the um, the heartbeat feeling out of mm-hmm. it. But but this one can mm-hmm. really boom. I mean, it fills up a sound, and especially um, with the tambourine and the left foot, if you have it mic'd, and you get you know really booming through a big <laughs> sound system it can I bet. it can be huge so um it's really my drummer that'll show up at every gig <laughs> that's right 
I don't have to worry about their car breaking down unless the plane loses my pedal board. <laughs> um, sh- uh, Keith is asking, what other tunings do you like? Um, I see Dad get your and drop D there, or? Yeah, uh, this is a this is an open D, D A D F sharp A D. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I like Dad Gad, which is. So Dad Gad's a nice one. Anywhere with a capo. Um, I like um, to take Dad Gad and take the A string down to a G. So that would be. So that was it would be a D G D G A D. So it's like an open G sus two chord with the five on the bottom. Um, it's a really cool sound. And then you can take the D from there and tune it down to a C. I love it. I love it. I love it. I really like that tuning. Because now you have an open G with a C on the bottom. And I just love that big four. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and it's like, I think our ears are normally wanting to go down to get to the root note. Right, right, but right. But there's something elevating about going up to get to the root note. So if I hit, if I go. More resolution, and also when you go, to <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's a little out of tune because uh, it's uh, close enough. <laughs> we've tuned about four tunings through yeah. there. Um, fantastic, fantastic. Um, other, so a couple other tunings that I really like is from Dad Gad. You can just take the F or the G and move it down to F sharp. That's mm-hmm. open D. If you take yeah. the F sharp, move it down to F. You have a D minor. Right, right. And all of these tunings working with a capo, I mean, you have so many different possibilities. Um, I have an open F one that I really like, F A C, F C F, um, and um, th- there's several others, but um, those are the those are the main ones. I have a really weird one that is an open F sharp major tuning with the five, the fifth string on the bottom. It's F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, with the D sharp on the bottom. Wow. And so it's like an open F sharp major chord with a six on the, the bottom. Six minor, yeah. And the same thing, the six on the bottom, or it could be D sharp minor seven, but yeah. you can use, you could use it in different ways, but when you go to the D sharp and resolve up to the F sharp, it's mm. it's just this feeling of you're coming up to, to resolution right. instead of going down. I, I don't know. Um, something is really powerful about that to me sonically. Yeah. So. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, wow, so many things to get to. Um, Tom M is saying, how many hours do you practice a day when you got this going, when you were trying to learn this? Uh, when I was trying to learn this, um, I... Oh, why did you decide to leave? Um, well, wow, so many questions. You guys are amazing. Um, <laughs> when I was uh, full on studying classical guitar and jazz at the same time, I would, I would do four hours of each every day. So wow. eight hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but that time has continued to be split up into different things. Um, of course, I have to try to manage the music business, which is a whole other thing. Yep. Um, and um, songwriting, lyric writing, vocal practice. Um, so it it's kind of has gotten split up over the years. It's uh, For a while, it was just classical guitar, eight mm-hmm. hours every day. And then I started doing both. It was four of each. And then mm-hmm. it was like, okay, now I want to do songwriting. So I got to add time for that. And... And so it just varies. Really, the answer is as much as humanly possible. And yeah. I've lost a lot of sleep, but gained a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of rewards emotionally from yeah. um, that feeling that you get when you've worked really, really hard on something. I mean, there's this one technique that I practiced for years, uh, well, several, and it's like, and then it's just that one day you finally get it, and it it's the greatest feeling in the world, and it makes every single second that you put into it worth it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why did I leave the University of South Florida? Um, I spent two and a half years on a record, and it was done, and I felt like it was time to move. So I moved to Philadelphia to be closer to New York City and not in New York City. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> yes, yes. 
But now you're here when you're home. Yes. Yeah, mm. yeah. But you're not home very much. <laughs> you're always out doing stuff. Yeah. Um, wow, so many things to get going. Um, you're doing nothing but practice. How long a day would you devote to practice only? All day except for sleeping and yoga <laughs> and to eat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, all right, well, let's... Um, Let's do a couple of announcements, and then uh, we'll let uh, Christy play another song for us. Um, wow, so many things to to let you guys know about. We've got our summer guitar conference, our Guitar Gathering 2018, which is continuing to get uh, evolved. Um, very happy to say that Christy is found some time in her schedule to uh, be with us. So Christy will be helping out with some of the uh, acoustic guitar and the finger style uh, end of things for our Guitar Gathering Conference. The dates for that are right here in Nashville, uh, June 20th through the 23rd. So it starts on a Wednesday and we'll go through Saturday. We'll be at Trevecca University here in uh, Nashville and it is four days of absolute guitar fun. So if you, I haven't put up the sales page yet. Um, I'll try and get that up this week. We got busy editing some stuff that we were doing this um, video shoot for Martin. So once I get that finished, then we will do the, uh, I'll put the page up for the conference. Ridiculously excited about that. We've got Will McFarland, Musicians Hall of Fame guitarist with the Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section. Uh, he's going to be here. Phil Kagey is going to be uh, joining him. The Blues Council Band. I'm talking with Johnny Highland. See if Johnny can make it here with us as well. Christy's going to be here with us as well as a whole um, slew of great instructors in a variety of styles jazz, blues, finger style, uh, flat picking um, talking with Molly Tuttle um, to see if perhaps Molly Bluegrass uh, IBMA flat picking guitarist of the year this year and uh, see if she can be with us so we've got a lot of different workshops going on and then jam times you guys said you wanted a lot of that so Exciting, all the things that are going on. Acoustic Guitar Magazine is going to be doing a feature on their summer camps, and ours is one of the ones they're going to be featuring uh, in their February issue. So lots of, lots of fun with that. If you're thinking about um, attending, the dates are June 20th through the 23rd here in Nashville. Like I said, in about a week, I'll have the sales page up, and you guys can start registering for that. Lots of fun with that. We also have our... Uh, our uh, finger style, or excuse me, not finger style, our, bl our blues guitar resources that we were offering this, this month from Joe Bonamassa. I found some good books. Some, uh, had a video that he did. This is a kind of a play-along book of lots of his solos and uh, uh, songs. Uh, comes along with online audio, backing tracks with it. And then this one is a lot of his solos from his most recent Blues of Desperation project and all of that, everything tabbed out, all that sort of stuff. We're only going to be offering these, offering these for another week. So if you're interested in these Joe Bonamassa resources, um, our wonderful moderator, Doug, will put up the link for you on that. You get those because uh, in about, probably by the end of this weekend, we will take that down. I only have a few left. So um, there you go. Lots of fun. Lots of fun with all that stuff. Um, all right, that's enough of that. Let's give something away. We haven't given anything away. I want to give away, this is a little tuner from our good friends over at tuners.com. Just a little uh, chromatic tuner. The winner of this is Strat6911. Strat6911, you've just won a little tuner. Hey, send me your information at service at mightyoakmusic.com. Your screen name, what you won, your physical mailing address, and we will get that, uh, we will get that out to you. So uh, lots of fun. Love, I love doing all that sort of stuff. All right, enough of me yapping. Can you um, play us something? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You want to answer some ask more questions? For, um, for the if we don't get to every question, then is there like a forum or something where people can go and we could answer? Uh, yes, there we do have our our uh, Learn a Master Guitar forum, which is available as well. It's been having problems a little bit lately, uh, but it's all functioning. And, and we can answer some on those, and I can send them to you. Maybe you can send me the answers, and then I can send it on to oh, them. Great. And Christy's, Christy's got her, her uh, web page, uh, christylanay.com. Um, 
You've got your Facebook page, which you're constantly doing stuff on. Yeah, constantly live streaming on there and yep. all kinds of fun things. Yeah, and so do you have an Instagram too? Yeah, Instagram, uh, the handle's just Christy Linnea, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E-L-E-N-E-E, -E -E, and then um, there's music on Spotify and iTunes and the website, ChristyLinnea.com. Yeah. I'm easy to find. There you go. We try to make it easy on people, right? That's to right. To um, find things. I haven't mentioned this yet, but how I g got to got familiar with Christy was uh, she was the winner of the Winfield Winfield competition, the uh, fingerstyle this year's 2017 champion, fingerstyle champion. Yes. So. And I thought I would play something that I played at the uh, the fingerstyle guitar championship. You have to do um, two songs in five minutes. So do I have five? Is You've got five all okay? the time. You kidding? You're the okay. special guest. You've oh, got awesome. all the time you need. So this is two pieces from my instrumental album that I condense into uh, one five-minute long segment to uh, for the first round of the competition. And I got to say, I prepared a lot for that thing, and then I showed up. There were all these incredible guitarists there, and I thought, well, I'm just going to do the best I can. And and then I won, and it was like, well, um, that's doing the best you can and knowing that winning is doing the best you can is um, can go a long way. That's what I got to yes. say. Yes. So uh, this is Ivory Coast into Chasing Infinity.
wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. I made the mistake of um, taking my jacket off and having cold hands. <laughs> <laughs> forgive me for all the missed notes. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> wow, okay. We've got more questions. Now we're going to try and answer as many questions as we can, and we've got so many more than we can even get to. Um, Lisa is saying, what are some of the most basic things to learn? Um, I assume with maybe the tapping style. What would be some of the? How would you? St how would one start learning that? What are, is there a simple exercise that was a good um, way to start doing tapping, that? Tapping. Um, well, it, it's like anything that you can do with your left hand. You want to try to be able to do with your right hand. But um, I actually started with tapping with just doing single, um, single um, fret and the same, or with two fingers, like to be able to do this. And just kind of go on up each string, and then I would do it with other combinations of fingers, like two and three, three and four, and everything. And then once you can do that, um, to uh, do pairs of of strings and frets. So, for example, um, a group of two, or a group of three, a group of four, a group of two would be tap pull that would be two one two and you're pulling up um, I see, am, am i seeing it correctly that here, you're yeah. tugging up yeah i'm ta tapping and then pulling up so one two one two one that's with one finger now with one finger it's not really quite that practical if you want to get that sound of like that kind of sound same thing with your right hand to do two fingers so it could still be considered a two and then I would find a note that was harmonizing it. Kind of like that. Ooh, my guitar's out of tune. Close enough for rock and roll. Um, so, so if we, uh, you would do tap, pull, tap, pull. And in a cool tuning, oh, if you have that going, that can actually sound really cool to just do two notes for a while and then take the next note in the, um, in the scale, so find all your notes up and down each string. And then do it on each string. So if I'm here, then my next note would go down to here, so I would have So this is an exercise just to do with a metronome. And I'm just doing um, like a harmonization up two strings. So if I were to, just like if you were to go. Right, but right. instead. And then three would be one, two, three. So tap, pull, tap, tap, pull, tap. So <laughs> Makes me feel like I want to do a waltz. <laughs> four and then five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So those are some like tapping exercises. Um, now just to, for folks that are wanting to practice that at home, what tune? Tell them what you're tuned to oh. and what your capo is on. Yeah, I'm in the open G sus two tuning with the four on the bottom C. So it's um, C G D C G D G A D, okay. and then I have the capo on the first fret. Right. So it's like an open A flat major two. And actually, the sheet music for that last song, Chasing Infinity, was published earlier this year in the Fingerstyle Guitar Journal. I know the sheet music is is up on that's Bill Pyburn's? Yeah, yeah, Bill yeah. Pyburn's. Yeah. So there's a there's tab and there's finger stuff. But that's all more fingerstyle. Um, actually, that piece was was developed from another fingerstyle exercise from um, just wanting to uh, do like um, A M I and in the, in the classical guitar world they call it P-I-M-A right. and then this is C 
but we don't even see that often. Well, for mm -hmm. me, I use it for Rosciatos. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but um, I was actually trying to get good at just doing this. And I wanted to practice that and actually have fun doing it instead of sitting there. So I, I started um, just finding cool little chords that I liked. And I just started messing with them. And just kind of moving it up. And by going through that exercise, a piece was born. And that's one thing that I love is how can we make music out of an exercise so that it makes right. it more fun. Right. Um, right hand patterns are so much more fun to practice in open tunings for me or over the context of some kind of chord progression so that it's not just sitting there playing open strings all day. Right, all right, right. Finger Fascinating. Pattern. Uh, yep, uh, Skip Disc is saying, do you have a good go-to fingerstyle picking pattern that you use? Uh, there's one that I practice a lot and don't necessarily use all the time, but um, it's it's just P-I-M-A-M-I, -M -M -I, so it would be just this. Um, the reason why I'm showing this one is something that my teacher showed me that blew my mind one day when he was showing me this pattern. So we will start with all the fingers on the strings. And the goal is to always have one finger on the string. So if I go P, I, M, A. Now right after the A plays, notice my M finger is going to come back. And it's going to rest on the string ab above it. And then after the M finger plays, the I finger is going to come back and rest on the other string. And after this one plays, the P is ready. So the next finger is always ready. And after the, the thumb plays, actually, all three of these can come out. So. And the point of it is to always have a finger on the string. So then you can do just a, just a pair of like A, M, I, P it would be just this same idea there's always a finger on the string but when you get a cool sounding chord and you speed that up you have that appears to be really fast mm -hmm. but it's actually not hard because I've practiced it really slow right, right. and because every there's always a finger that's ready um, so the same opposite P-I-M-A thumbs ready thumb plays all three of them are ready And you can get this really cool, almost like harp sounding thing. Four. So if you can do all four of those really well, most of, or all three of those patterns that I just showed, most other patterns aren't that hard yeah, yeah. to me because yeah. it's training the hands to always have that next finger ready. Right. Of course, there's all kinds of different patterns, but. And the key to, key to conquering something like that is you start slow. You've got to get the motion correct first. Once you get the motion correct, no matter how slow it is, then speeding it up is a pretty routine task. But if you just kind of half know the motion and you start speeding it up, then it's just kind of slop you're putting through the system. Yes. So uh, the key is getting the motion perfectly slow and then starting to speed it up gradually. Somebody asked if I'm married. No. <laughs> I was engaged two years ago, and then that didn't work out. But I married my guitar a long time ago. There um, you go. So somebody would have to share me with the, the, the guitar. <laughs> um, <laughs> OMJ is saying, what strings are you using? Um, these are the, the uh, Martin SPs, 13s. Now, and I noticed your guitar, even though you're doing all the tapping stuff, it's not particularly high action or anything no. like that. It's pretty low, actually. Pretty low, so it's pretty normal looking. Um, it's actually a really thin neck. Yeah. It takes... Um, that is real thin. I always actually, if I, I practice on my thicker neck guitars, mm -hmm. just because it's better for my hands, but then I notice when I pick up this one again, it takes getting used to again. I find myself, I might miss some notes, because I'm like, it's almost like an electric guitar. It's mm -hmm. so thin. It is very thin. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Uh, so you have to kind of get used to it. Um, tips or pointers to get to the intermediate level for finger style guitars. Well, do you want to answer? You want me to answer? Uh, you're the, you're the guest. What if you have if you have a good resource um, from taking a person who's just kind of learning that? Because I when, when when I covered through the through the guitar course that I did, uh, we kind of covered just basic finger style patterns and things like that. If they want to go to the next level, what are some, what are some res? Do you know of any resources that would, that you've run across that are good for something like that? Um, the best resource that I can recommend for any player at any level is to play along to records, um, because it's like somebody might say to me, "Well, who's a musician that you love to play with?" And I might say, "Bella Fleck." Mm -hmm. Right. So you can actually go in and play with Bella Fleck by playing to his uh, records. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that has always helped me, and it, it's just even for things like tone, mm -hmm. um, articulation, you know, there's a lot of things in sheet music that are, that you can write, but there's something about the emotional music that is translated in, in right. audio, um, so playing along the records helps me. Um, I. I I would say practicing a lot to a metronome is a really good idea, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and practicing really slow. And tapping is a very physical, very physical skill. Just try. We did a little bit of that after you left the next day at the fingerstyle retreat, and wow! After uh, you know, we kind of worked on little five-minute segments and stuff like that, and boy, after about thirty minutes, they were begging for mercy with with yeah. just all the. It's a very physical technique. Yeah. of all the tugs and pulls and and tension that you have to have on your fingers <laughs> to make the to make the hammer-ons and the pull-offs needed um let's see let's see if we can get one or two more and then we'll give some more stuff away and have uh have christy close us out um canvet do you approach your music and notes from a theoretical approach or just by the way it sounds when I was in college, I took a class called uh, Jazz Improvisation, and um, the teacher said, learn all the theory and then forget it when you play. And I thought it was incredible advice because uh, it's very easy to get in your head. That being said, I loved all the theory, and I'm, st I'm still learning all mm -hmm. the time. Of, I mean, just new things, but... Um, I love learning about music in the academic world, even though, like I said earlier, at one point I thought that I would be completely scared of the academic world of yeah. music. But it's actually incredible because it's like, if you think about music as a language, when right. you learn how to speak English, that's one level of it. But once you know how to read, then you can read books. And you're learning something deeper that you're learning through the language of music as opposed to just learning the actual language. And that's what it is when you're learning songs, like mm -hmm. reading a book. You're learning something deeper through the language of music versus just learning the language of music. Um, and uh, I forgot the question that I was actually answering. Oh, the theory. Um, but in learning theory, it's, it's really cool because you kind of learn how to understand music from uh, a deeper level and understand not only how to translate the theory into your own instrument, but how to translate it to other players. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a band and um, articulate something to them using the musical language, um, that's fantastic. But when I started composing, I changed the tuning of my guitar um, so that I could make myself forget all of the patterns <laughs> that I'd ever learned because I didn't want to I, I didn't want to have to depend right. on these patterns right. I wanted to to use my ears because it's like you spend years learning the entire neck of the guitar up and down and being able to play every string every scale on any string up and down at any place in the neck at any point in time it's a it's a lot of work and mm -hmm. And there's a lot of mental brain knowledge up there. But when you change the tuning, all the patterns change, except what doesn't change is the, the horizontal right. movement is still the same pattern of steps. It just depends on where you start. Um, so, but all of the chord shapes change. So it's cool, like different chords that I've come up with in open tunings. I might have never thought, ha thought of if I were trying to use shapes that I'd learned but right. because I came across this sound that I liked 
um, I discovered something. And then it was, it was always this discovery because I go to the piano and say, oh, I would have never thought to play that chord. I mean, and then I try, and then I can explain it theoretically yeah. if I want to think, oh, that's just, you know, this half diminished chord, whatever, you know, or this, mm -hmm. um, this is a leading tone to hear or whatever. You can explain it, but it's like if you get too far on your brain, you might not take as many adventures. Yeah. So I like to have both sides um, of the theory and using your ears. For sure. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, it's, it is time for us to start <laughs> wrapping this up. They want you to play. Cookie is saying, Steve, are you going to play that guitar or just hold it? Well, um, well I guess we could play. We were noodling yeah. around on a little <laughs> chord progression earlier. Okay. But uh, you're in probably some far out tuning now. I can get to a tuning. Oh, uh. I'll give away a CD as well. Oh, yeah, let's give away a CD. Okay. So this is uh, Chasing Infinity. This is your most recent one? That is the instrumental album. The instrumental one. Okay. Where are some places uh, while you're tuning that you're going to be going to in the next few weeks? Let's see, I'll be in D.C. in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I'm doing two shows with Tim Reynolds from Dave Matthews Band, oh, which is going to be fun. Um, one's in Philadelphia on um, December 21st, and then December 23rd is in Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, I have a little West Coast tour coming up. Um, Portland, some parts of California, that's in February. Um, and then I'll be back on the East Coast again in April. It's all on my website, christylanae.com. There's a couple festivals and cool little things going on. Fantastic. Somebody's about to win this. The winner of this is <laughs> Dave White. Good. I'm glad Dave won something. Dave White, you have just won this. Our wonderful uh, Dave has kind of been our honorary um, manager of conferences for the last couple of conferences. And he has been kind of my right-hand man. And I've... I've uh, leaned on Dave probably way too much but uh, I'm glad you've just won this Dave send me your information and uh, we'll get it off to you there um, I'm coming to the south I just saw something yes I'm from Florida originally so I go to the south a lot and Keith inspirations come from everywhere including nature waterfalls hikes time away from the guitar completely is sometimes when the best things come to me yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay all right um, let's see before, let's see, we can noodle around on something. Are you about ready? And yeah. In kind of in, as we're getting closer to standard tuning, it takes a while to get us back to standard, standard tuning. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I feel like a, I'm, I'm painting with my little eight color crayon kit and you're, you've got the 164 oh box gosh. over here. No, you've got the, um, a whole palette of colors in standard tuning. <laughs> Uh, we were just messing around on a little uh, progression uh, to take the mystery out of it. It's a D minor ninth, a G thirteenth, to a uh, uh, C major, uh, to an F major. Then we'll do a little, a little uh, A augmented to get us back into the D minor. There you go. All right, uh, let's see.
time Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, wow. All right. Thank you guys so much for uh, being part of tonight with us. You know, keep up, keep up your own practicing. Keep up your own work. I, I got an email just this morning. Uh, I had sent out a, a big email advertising this and letting everybody know that Christy was, was going to be with us. And I received a, an email back rarely. Well, I, I get these occasionally, but I... That one got one that said, "Thanks for the email, but I haven't practiced in four years." Was the email that was sent back to me, and to me, it was just so sad, you know, that music, which would, which they want to be a part of their life, is, for whatever reason, they maybe they got discouraged or whatever, is not part of their life right now. And I would just encourage you: keep up the work in your practicing. A lot of times, you don't see the results immediately. But you keep at it. Sometimes you're doing exactly the right thing, but the results don't happen for a few weeks or a few months. But when they do, like Christy was saying, the light turns on and uh, you're, uh, you're able to play things you never thought possible. That's how it starts. So uh, keep up the good work in your own practicing. Do you have a closing song for us? I see Would you, you like? If you have, if you're, I was hoping I, for it. You were, you were tuning up like something was about to happen. I so was this hoping is great. for it. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve. I mean, what an incredible opportunity to meet you and, and oh. see all of the beautiful knowledge you're sharing with this gorgeous community of people. When we did the, uh, the finger style guitar retreat, it was awesome because it was, you know, just so many people filled with love about music. And, yeah. and I just have to say, um, you know, just touch on what you were saying. Yeah. Um, there is such a profound beautiful experience that happens when you have the chance to express yourself through music and through art and and to me that's why we practice because yeah. of those moments like with this moment that we just had where we're we're actually speaking to each other through the language of music and it's as an expression of the heart and that makes all of the time of practicing scales worth it right <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to play for us i'm going to play for you guys what I played in the final round of the uh, Winfield Guitar Competition. And this is the uh, first instrumental piece I ever wrote. It's in an open F tuning, F A C F C F. I see somebody saying, I'm getting inspired, gotta practice. Yes, inspiration. <laughs> inspiration actually also means breathing, so music can become like breathing. Um, but this is an open F tuning, F A C F C F, and that's uh, finger style and tapping all in one. Um, this is on my instrumental album. It's called Song for Michael Pukash. Thank you. 